In today's video, we're gonna dive deeper into where putting weights on your riser affects the tune of your bow and how it ultimately affects the performance of your bow. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and we're gonna make this channel a great resource to all types of archery. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell, that way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. I'd appreciate it. So this video comes by request from one of my patrons on the Discord server that I have attached to my Patreon account. And they were asking specifically how weights and where they are and how you join them uh, to the actual riser will affect the performance of your bow potentially. So the actual patron put a picture of a weight that they made that spans the distance between these two mounting points and they it's a solid weight that is bolted in both places. So he wanted to know how that affects the performance of the bow itself. Now, not many people realize that even at a fairly light draw weight, your riser flexes actually quite a lot while at full draw. And that is just due to the load that is placed on the bow itself. And the manufacturer has to do a very good job of controlling the flex that the riser is actually experiencing. So the flex that is happening is pretty much standard and similar across all limbs and risers. They're all the same. There are two ways to look at the type of flex that happens. There is a uh, flex that goes this direction because as you're pulling back the bow, the limbs are bending and so is the riser that way, okay? But you have a lot of things to take into consideration when designing a bow. How much does the pockets flex in as you're pulling back? And what is the balance between those two flexes? You really should have equal flex top and bottom. Otherwise, you're gonna require and need different tiller and limb balances and things like that to help control the knock travel as the arrow's coming out of the bow. You also need to control the plane that it is flexing in. It needs to be flexing towards the archer and not bending out of plane or twisting as you're pulling the bow back. And I can tell you for sure that not only is how and where it flexes important, but also the mass of the actual system is important too. So if you have something and you use your basic Newton laws of motion, a heavier object is gonna be harder to start moving compared to a lighter object. So you're basically, you're looking at inertial resistance to movement. And if I have weight on the bottom limb pocket like I do here, and I don't on this top limb pocket, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna slow down this bottom pocket reaction. And what you're gonna actually need is a much higher knocking point to compensate within the tuning system for the slow reaction of this bottom limb pocket. Now, if you take that even further and you join the two together in a bridge, you're now eliminating or changing the amount of flex that is going on in this bottom half, but your top half is totally still unchanged. So you're really starting to affect the dynamic performance of the riser itself. The only reason that I know this is because I played around with mounting my V-bar bracket on my recurve bow, this here, and I mounted it down on the bottom and in the back of my riser, kind of trying to emulate what compound shooters do because when they're shooting a single side rod, they'll mount it really down, uh, really far down on the bottom of their riser so they can use the weights that they are putting on their stabilizer to hold the bow more still and be more effective. Same applied to recurve, so I was playing with it. <clears throat> and my oh my, did that bow hold like I have never held a bow still before in my life, but it shot like garbage. Even with compensating with a much higher knocking point and having to back down my bow weight because I actually weakened the arrow slightly, even with a good tune, it shot terrible. There was no, the level of forgiveness wasn't there and it just didn't work. I tried it for several weeks because the bow held so good. I tried using the tune that I had with a normal setup and just shooting that bow as is with the weights change. Well, first of all, it didn't group very well and I just didn't have the confidence that it would be consistent. It didn't group anyway, so I went and changed my tune and it grouped better, it actually grouped quite good, but the forgiveness was just out the window. There was no forgiveness at all. Um, and I think it just comes down to that I was affecting how fast this bottom pocket reacted compared to the top pocket. And it just threw a wrench in the works that was not what I wanted. So now with that explanation in mind, you're probably asking, well, why do I have weights in the bottom pocket and not in the top pocket? It comes down to 
I'm just looking for a certain balance. I don't have a heavy enough weight that's big enough that'll fit inside of the ring here to not have this here. I need twice the weight of, of weight here. Um, and putting it down here is just the next best place to put it. And it's not ideal. I'm not shooting in competition. I'm not going to world championships. I'm not trying to set world records. So ultimately, this isn't important. I'm just having fun. Um, so does it really matter to you as a shooter at home? If you're looking at competing, if you're looking at shooting higher scores and being more consistent and really paying attention to your tune, I would say yes, it does make a difference. Um, ideally, I would probably attach my weights here and then have it hanging down. Like I've seen people mount like cuckoo clock weights here and then they hang down in front of the bow. I think that'd be a much better option than putting any weight down in this bottom pocket. Uh, the attachment point being here, more towards the center part of the bow where it's very stiff and often entirely solid from here to here, um, I think is a much better place for a weight location to be um, just due to, like I said, changing the dynamic performance of the balance of the limbs and specifically the riser and how the riser reacts as you're letting go of the string, as those pockets are unloading and the riser is not is uh, reducing its amount of flex that it has it's just changing too much in the entire system and you're just asking for tuning headaches and then ultimately consistency issues. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.